What's up, YouTube? Alex here, AKH95, bringing you guys another video, uh, another rant discussion. I figured I'd uh, just do one just chilling here at home. Uh, this rant, uh, it's gonna be as the title says, why I think uh, why I think archetypes are good for the game. And then my rant after this, which I'm not gonna include in this video, obviously, is gonna be the next video. It's gonna be why I think archetypes are bad for the game. Um, and by archetypes, I mean themes. Themes such as uh, Burning Abyss, uh, I don't know, Constellers, Intellers, you know, just like Shadals, just, just different types of themes. Um, archetypes, basically. Um, and in this video, like I said, I'm going to be talking about why I think archetypes are good for this game, or themes are good for this game. Um, and I'm going to delve right into it. Um, the biggest thing that I think that themes are good for in this game is uh, that they make the game really user-friendly. And by that I mean it makes everything really super easy for players, both uh, new, uh, old players, and uh, players getting into, like, just players getting into the game, as well as players that are trying to, you know, get into the competitive scene, or even just play casually. It makes it really easy for them. The decks, the decks are really, uh, uh, they're really pilot-friendly in the sense that uh, they're, they're, they're made really easy to play. They're, they're not made too complicated. Um, obviously, there have been certain outliers in the past that we've seen. Uh, certain decks have been slightly more complicated to play. Um, but after a while, and with enough practice, every deck gets easy to an extent. Um, and, and as far as uh, themes go, I think it, it also makes it really easy for, for card design for Konami. Um, particularly because we've seen pretty much every theme, theme in this game after 2009 has essentially been the same. And if you really think about it, every, every theme or archetype has pretty much had the same several things. Um, it's had, it has an enabler, something that enables them to, you know, do an OTK or their main play. It has like a searcher, like a rota type card or a floater. Um, it has something that blows up back row, something that blows up monsters. Um, a card that soft locks the opponent out of the game, which is essentially the trump card. And it has like a main deck boss monster and like an extra deck boss monster, whether it be a synchro or an exceed. Um, and obviously right now Konami's more focused on exceed just because, um, that, that's, essentially their newest mechanic to the game, exceeding as far as, um, you know, monster-wise. Um, and it makes it really easy for Konami to design these things. They pretty much just slap a whole new name on an archetype, change the wording here or there, um, you know, create a couple new names for monsters, change the attack values, but the general, the general idea is it's really simple, and essentially it's really easy to go between archetypes and themes for players, um, that want to, that is. Um, and I think it makes it really, uh, the game, it makes the game more simple, believe it or not, as far as uh, competition, you kind of, uh, like, you know ev what every deck is going to do, it, kinda, it doesn't really uh, make every deck centralized or its own thing, like, every deck obviously is going to have its own goal, um, some decks will have their own specific mechanic uh, to what they do, whether it be, uh, I don't know, milling, whether it be uh, drawing cards, whether it be protecting each other, whether it be float, uh, being a floater, uh, whether it be flipping like Shadals, um, just anything along that nature. And uh, the themes make the game really simple in my opinion. They don't really, they, they add a, a new level to the game where it's it's not uh, it, it's not like where every deck is necessarily going to be the same just because, like the themes are what separates like the names typically and some of the mechanics behind the decks separate them. But they don't really, uh, it's not like before where there's a ton of generic cards and um, in certain decks, and players could pretty much just uh, just use the one generic deck that was the most optimal version of that and change it to whatever um, event they wanted to play. Right now, it makes everything really simple as far as how the deck is played, and it's kind of just spoon-fed to players, um, which is probably a negative, which I'll talk about in the next video. Um, but it, it kind of gives people, like, as soon as a theme is released in a set, um, you pretty much know, whether it be from the OCG or just from reading the cards when you get them, um, what's what should be played in it and what shouldn't be played in it. I mean, you're obviously probably going to be playing some one of the three of draw cards. You're going to be playing, I don't know, like, like let's take, I don't know, Satellus, for example. That's, that's a, obviously a really popular deck right now. Let's take Satellus. The deck's really, um, it's really straightforward, like, what you're going to play in it. You're going to play the three Debris Dragon Guy as an Altair. You're going to play the three to Nebs, which is your Stratos, which is essentially your Enabler. You're going to be playing um, the, whatchamacallit, the, the Vega Guy, the basically the Bogard Knight Guy. He enables some plays. Like, and there's a ton of different things. And then they have their boss monster in their, uh, in the Deltaros or whatever it's called, the Exceed guy, and then I'm pretty sure they're getting a new one too. And then they have, uh, the, the, typically, right now, themes will just have a couple of generic cards splashed in. We obviously have Emptiness being a broken, uh, splashable card. We had Soul Charge being a broken splashable card that all these decks play. There's obviously a couple cards that they'll play, but for the most part, there's very, uh, there's very, very minimal opportunity to change, uh, a theme. It's kind of just given to you, and it's really kind of a... It's like a nice little package that Konami just 
gives to you. It's kind of just like, here, play this, or click this, or something. Like, it's really just, it, like I said, it goes back to that whole user-friendly thing, and I figure uh, that's probably the best thing about themes, um, and a lot of those things obviously can be interpreted differently. And like I said, in the next video, I'll be talking about what I, why I think themes are really, and archetypes are really bad for this game. Um, but like I said, there's there's two totally different spectrums that you could look uh, look at the game um, as far as archetypes, uh, the benefits, uh, the negatives, obviously, um, pros and cons, that is. Uh, so there, there's definitely a bunch of different tangents you could go off. There's probably some things I didn't mention, um, some things I just chose not to mention because I wanted to see what you guys think. Maybe you guys will mention some of them. Drop a comment down below with you guys uh, with what you guys think. Uh, why, do you, why do you guys personally think uh, archetypes are good for this game? And then the next video, like I said, I'll talk about why themes I think are bad for this game. Uh, and, and, you know, just, just let me know what you guys think. Do you guys enjoy themes? Do you guys like more generic type stuff? Do you like Konami kind of just giving you a pre-made product uh, without you really being able to think for yourself and kind of figure it out on your own with generic cards? Um, do you enjoy it? I mean, especially with a lot of the themes, like, especially one of the, I guess you would call this a theme is, uh, one of the pros that I actually kind of should mention is, uh, themes kind of bring a lot more diversity to the game, especially because certain themes are, are kind of on a level playing field. It makes it easier for, uh, quote unquote, competi uh, the competitive game to where, let's say like right now, there's Shadows, there's Burning Abyss, and there's Satellis. It's kind of just like a circle. All the decks either beat each other, I mean, obviously Shadows is probably the best out of the three, but... Realistically, it's kind of just like a circle, and all the decks either beat each other or they're kind of relatively equal to each other. Um, and it kind of makes it diverse in its own sense. And I don't mean, obviously, because it's just three decks. Um, I mean, in general, like it makes it kind of diverse in the sense that people are going to be wanting to play different themes, what they like, what they don't like. Um, and it makes it easier for, uh, for the game to be more diverse rather than it being like one single generic deck that's just destroying everything and it's just pretty much mirror match based. Um, and, and themes kind of allow the, pre prevent there to be too many mirror matches from occurring. Um, and they kind of, they don't really inhibit diversity. They, they promote diversity. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. Let me know what you guys think. I, I kind of went off on a little bit of a tangent there as usual. But let me know what you guys think. Drop a comment down below. Check out my Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook fan page, all that stuff at the end of this video as well as in the description of this video. Uh, subscribe if you already haven't. Uh, let me know what you guys uh, would like to see in other videos. Um, it's the end of the format. Right now we're pretty much just waiting on the ban list. I'm not sure I'm going to do a ban list prediction. I don't really care for ban list predictions. It doesn't really matter what people predict. Like, it doesn't really matter. You're, like, the, the margin for profit is kind of just irrelevant. So, or make potential to make profit right now is just kind of irrelevant. So, I guess you may want to sell some stuff. You may want to keep some stuff. But, there's no point in doing a ban list prediction because it doesn't matter. Konami does their own thing a lot, a lot of the time. Just, um, they, they just, they do their own thing, so it, it's kind of irrelevant, like, you're, people are going to play regardless, some people are going to choose not to play, but yeah, that's it, peace you guys, uh, subscribe if you already haven't, check out my other videos, and, uh, later!